Good day, everybody, and welcome to your third session of the Human Growth and Development online course. We'll be studying the topic of gametogenesis today. We'll be going through the definition of the term gametogenesis, and we will be looking at how the process happens in both males and females. All right, so let's get started. So first of all, let's define the term gametogenesis. This is the process that involves cell division in order to form gametes or reproductive cells. The purpose of gametogenesis is to form haploid gametes. And if you remember last time when we took the topic of cell division, we discussed how cells can either be haploid or diploid depending on the number of chromosomes that are found in the cell. If they have the total number of chromosomes of a somatic cell, it's referred to as diploid. If they have half the total number of chromosomes, they are referred to as haploid. And so the end result of gametogenesis is haploid gametes. In humans, this process occurs in the gonads through a set of divisions involving meiosis and mitosis as well. Now, before we get into the stages of the process, we have to familiarize ourselves with the term primordial germ cells. Now, what you're looking at here is a developing embryo, um, which has had a segment cut out of it and expanded at the top here so you can see what is going on inside. Now, generally, the embryo is connected to a cavity, which is referred to as the yolk sac. Now, what happens here is that a population of cells originating in the yolk sac will migrate into the developing embryo to a specific mass of tissue found on either side of the midline, referred to as the genital ridge or the gonadal ridge. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the midline. This is the midline. You've got the developing neural tube, the aorta, and the intestines here in the middle. These are all developing still. And on either side, you have two masses of tissue called the gonadal ridges or the genital ridges. These will eventually become the gonads. So these cells originate from the yolk sac and they migrate to these gonadal ridges and are termed the primordial germ cells. So, the common pathway is essentially the stage of gametogenesis that occurs in both males and females. So, regardless of what the gender is, this process happens. This pathway involves the migration or formation of the primordial germ cells, um, which are the original um, reproductive cells. So reproductive cells are formed from a specialized group of cells called the primordial germ cells during early embryonic development. As stated previously, these come from the yolk sac and during development what happens is they migrate to the gonadal ridge which is the part of the embryo that will eventually become the gonads. During this phase, the primordial germ cells are also multiplying by mitosis. So they're doing two things. They are migrating from the yolk sac and they are multiplying by mitosis, which means that they are increasing in number. Once they reach the gonadal ridge, they become called the gametogonia. So we change their name. While they are migrating and dividing by mitosis, we refer to them as primordial germ cells. Once they reach the gonadal ridge, we refer to them as gametogonia. 
From this point onward, the development process differs in males and females. So we're going to see that even though the phases of cell division are the same, the changes and the processes and the end result of this development differs in males and females. Okay, so if we start off with spermatogenesis, um, from the name you can figure out that this means the process by which spermatogonia, which are the gametogonia in males, become the spermatozoa. Okay, so remember the gametogonia are the primordial germ cells once they've reached the gonadal ridge. In males, they are referred to as spermatogonia. So the first step in this process is the spermatogonia undergoing a mitotic division in order to give me the primary spermatocytes. Following this phase, the primary spermatocyte will undergo a meiotic division, which is referred to as meiosis 1, and will result in the formation of the secondary spermatocytes, which are usually two in number. Each of these secondary spermatocytes will again undergo another phase of meiosis, referred to as meiosis 2, and this will result in the formation of four spermatids. So essentially, during the process of spermatogenesis, you have one mitotic division and two meiotic divisions. These processes, or this stage of the process, happens in the seminiferous tubules, which are basically compartments or subdivisions found inside the testis. Once the spermatids have been formed, they will undergo maturation to become the sperm or the spermatozoa, which by definition are mature male gametes. This part of the process is called spermiogenesis and occurs in the epididymis. So if we just look at it in a picture form, Okay, so remember you have the first cell, which was the spermatogonium or the spermatogonia. This cell undergoes mitosis to give me the primary spermatocyte. Each primary spermatocyte will undergo its first meiotic division to give me secondary spermatocytes. And then the secondary spermatocytes will each undergo another meiotic division to give me four spermatids. And up until this Part or this stage of the process, this is all happening in the seminiferous tubules of the testis. And once the spermatids start going through the phase of maturation into spermatozoa, this is happening inside the epididymis. Spermatogenesis generally occurs from puberty until death which means that once it begins at puberty, it is a lifelong process for males. It can only occur properly at a temperature one to eight degrees lower than the normal body temperature. And for this reason, the male gonads or the testis are found in a skin sac outside the body referred to as the scrotum which serves to protect the testis and at the same time provide a lower body temperature, or sorry, a lower temperature for the process of spermatogenesis. All right, that concludes the process of spermatogenesis. And now we're going to look at oogenesis, which is the process of formation of the female reproductive cell. So, for the females, their female gametogonia or the oogonia 
Uh, remember, this is the stage where the primordial germ cells have completed their migration and they are now in the gonadal ridge. They start off as roughly 7 million cells, but during the process of development and um, the growth of the embryo and fetus, they are reduced to 1 million cells by the time the baby is born. Just before birth, the oogonia will undergo mitosis and become the primary oocytes. They will start, the primary oocytes will start their first meiotic division. So remember, the stages of cell division are the same. I'm going to have one mitotic division and two meiotic divisions. However, the first meiotic division for the primary oocytes will be halted in the prophase. So it reaches the prophase and then it stops. The cells or the primary oocytes will remain arrested in the prophase of meiosis 1 until puberty. So from birth until puberty, they are arrested in that phase. And meiosis 1 or cell division of meiosis 1 will be completed after puberty to result in formation of the secondary oocyte as well as something called the first polar body. Now, a polar body is a cell that results from the uneven division of the primary oocyte during meiosis 1. So that means that when the cytoplasm is dividing, um, a large portion of it will form the secondary oocyte, and the remaining cytoplasm that is left over will result in the formation of a polar body. Now, a polar body does have uh, chromosomes and genetic material. Similar to the secondary oocyte, it will also be haploid. However, it tends to be smaller in size and because of this cannot be fertilized. For the most part, polar bodies undergo apoptosis or they will undergo a process of cell death. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if we look at this diagram here, this is a representation of how the polar body will be formed. If we consider this cell at the top here to be the primary oocyte, it will undergo, as you can see where the arrow is found, uneven division that results in one daughter cell having more cytoplasm than the other. So you can see here, you've got one large cell, the secondary oocyte, and you've got a smaller cell, which is the polar body. Secondary oocytes, um, again, I apologize for the spelling mistake, will undergo another round of meiosis to produce what we call oocytes and the second polar body. So this means that, again, the meiotic division will result in uneven distribution of the cytoplasm, and the resulting cells are called oocytes and the second polar bodies. Oocytes will then mature, so they will undergo a process of maturation, and the end result will be formation of the ova or the ovum. So, Let's just go through that process again. We have, remember the primary oocyte was arrested in the prophase of meiosis. Once it completes its meiotic division, it will give me the secondary oocyte and the first polar body. And you can clearly see here that the polar body is smaller than the secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte will undergo another um, meiotic division to give me the oocyte or oocyte, which will then become the mature ovum. And you can see here that the polar bodies do undergo another phase of division, and we do have an increase in the number of polar bodies. But as stated earlier, the polar bodies are too small to be fertilized and will most likely undergo apoptosis.
So in summary, gametogenesis is the process by which haploid reproductive cells are formed. Reproductive cells originate as the primordial germ cells from the yolk sac and will then undergo a series of changes to either become a sperm or an ovum depending on the genetic nature of the embryo as being either male or female. And remember that the stages are generally the same. I will have one mitotic division and two meiotic divisions, but again, the process differs for both um, males and females. And that concludes today's session, and I would just like to leave you with a quote that will hopefully give you some sort of positive uh, push for the day. And may these turbulent tides of life push you forward and not drown you. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope this session was useful for you, and I will see you guys next time.